everybody, Johnny from Worship Sound Guy here. So we had a question come in the other day from Instagram user It's Walshy, who is asking how to EQ vocals for a worship team, specifically boosting frequencies. So this is a great question, I definitely want to take a minute to answer it. So when it comes to EQing vocals, for me, the trick is actually not boosting. So there's this concept called subtractive EQ. And so basically what that means is we're gonna do the majority of our EQ work by cutting frequencies rather than boosting them. And especially in a live context and especially on vocals, this can really make a huge difference in your mix. So the best analogy that I've ever heard when it comes to why you do subtractive EQ or kind of like how subtractive EQ works is it's kind of like, imagine that you're a sculptor and you're taking this big block of marble and you're chiseling away all the stuff that's not the statue underneath. Like you can imagine, like you can kind of conceptualize in your mind what this statue looks like inside this giant block of stone and you're chiseling away everything that you don't need to reveal the good stuff underneath that you do want. And that's exactly the same concept in subtractive EQ. So like for example, you wouldn't try to like super glue other chunks of rock onto this big block of marble to make something that wasn't there before. You wanna work with what you have and strip away what's not good to reveal what is good. So it's kinda like if you think about it, the difference between cutting with your EQ versus boosting. So I'm not gonna say there's never a time to boost when you're EQing vocals, but when I start, I wanna take away what's bad first. So that's like stuff like the boxy frequency frequencies in the mid range or kind of the low mud range down in the low mids or maybe there's like some kind of harsh frequency in the upper mids that just doesn't sound musical. Those are the kind of things that I want to listen for first and take away before I ever think about like what could I add to the sound. I want to take away the stuff that doesn't sound good. And honestly, 95% of the time, that's all it needs. Like with that kind of EQ and maybe a little tasteful compression in there, you're going to have an awesome vocal tone. So to get a look at what I'm talking about, let's go ahead and actually EQ a vocal and you can listen along. So let's check out some subtractive EQ on a female vocal. Let's listen to it with no EQ and hear what it sounds like. I will praise you, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus. So you can even see on our analyzer here that we've got a huge buildup in the low mid frequencies. So this is the kind of thing where you might hear it and go, okay, I need some more high frequency and you might be tempted to reach for a high shelf right off the bat. But in this case, what I wanna do is take care of all that stuff in the low mids that doesn't need to be there, and then maybe at the end, I'll worry about adding some more sparkle. But this is gonna be priority number one for me is cleaning up everything that doesn't need to be there. Let's go ahead and do that. I will praise you, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. So right off the bat, that's a huge upgrade to our vocal tone. It actually, it sounds like we added a high frequency boost, even though all we did was cut about 6 dB right around 280. So the next thing that I wanna do, just to clean it up even more, let's put a low cut filter in there and sort of sweep that up just to get rid of like any kind of low muddiness that just really shouldn't be there to begin with. I will praise you, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Okay, so that's just a little low frequency cut, dumping off everything below uh, around 131. And that's just kind of cleaning up some of that low range that maybe has kind of got some stage rumble, just stuff that's not part of her voice. So here's the cool thing about subtractive EQ is that once you start addressing those big problems, you start kind of unmasking smaller problems. So for me, the biggest thing I heard was that huge buildup of low mid. So now that we have that out of the way, it sort of revealed a couple issues in the mid range that if I just like cranked up a high boost, I wouldn't have been able to hear. So now let's tackle some of those issues. I will praise you, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Let's sing it again just like that this morning. 
Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. So right there, I was able to pinpoint three frequency ranges kind of spanning from 600 hertz up to kind of the radio frequency at uh, right around 1K, and then finally sort of a nasally frequency right around 2.5K that I all felt like needed just a little bit of help to get out of the way of the vocal. And that's the big thing, is right? Is we're making room for the vocal to shine through. We're taking out the parts that aren't as flattering so we can make room for the parts that are. Let's listen to a quick before and after with these new EQ moves. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. So just like that, we've created a vocal that has a ton of clarity and we didn't use a single boost to do it. So another great place to practice subtractive EQ is with your guitars. Guitars are another one where frequency ranges, especially in the mid range, uh, will really build up. And you can do a lot for your mix just by uh, kind of thinning out some of those ranges where the buildup happens, especially if you have two or more guitar tracks going, uh, this will really help your mix out to create some space. Let's listen to guitar track really quick. So that part sounds awesome. It's a nice little lead part on the song Tremble. And uh, what I wanna do here is kinda just clean it up a little bit, take out some of the little spiky mid-range things that kinda can be fatiguing to the listener's ear and that make his guitar sound not as clear as it should be. Let's do a couple of those now. So on this guitar track, I did some things that were really subtle, but in the context of the whole mix, it's gonna to help to create a lot of space. So the first thing I did was I cut off all the unnecessary stuff at the low and high end of the frequency spectrum. So I just used a high cut and a low cut filter just to zip in and do that to kind of tighten up and focus the guitar into the mid range. Next, I cut out some low mud that was building up right around 440 hertz. I took out kind of a piercing frequency that I heard right around uh, 2.1K. And then I felt like there was maybe just a little too much of that mid-range that was gonna step on my vocals right around 1K. Let's go ahead and listen to the before and after on that. I'll highlight all my bands and turn them off and then turn them all back on again. So the difference is subtle, but having those bands engaged really helps to focus his guitar tone and make it sound even more present in the mix without using a single boost. So I hope that gave you kind of a new perspective on how to EQ subtractively instead of just reaching for that boost knob. So if you like videos like this, don't forget to like and subscribe right down below. Also, if you wanna go more in depth, we've got a course called Sound Guy Essentials that is in the description right down there where you can learn from hours of video just like this. It'll take you from zero to hero as a sound guy. Remember to crank that bass and we'll see you next time.